you have already put doubt in their minds that they are going to lose. It's there. We beat them. The doubt is already there. Ole Miss has never won an SEC tournament game, ever. Again, another first. Rob freaking win. Rob win a game. And these are teams that are familiar with one another. They faced off during the regular season with Georgia taking two out of three from Ole Miss. We had an opportunity to prove to ourselves that we could compete with the best programs in the country. And our pitching could, could compete against the best hitters in the country because, you know, they were one of the top SEC programs. We went into every single game knowing that we could win that game. When it came time for postseason, all of our, our whole team was very confident. We kind of walked onto the field and we knew that we could hang with this team that we were just as good as them and that we could beat them in this tournament. Courtney Surrett laying down the bunt and the throw to try to get the lead runner goes out into center field from DiCarlo. A one pitch. Sliced right back up the middle. Come on, go! You gotta go! You gotta go! And Ole Miss will score not only one, but two. Their first two runs in SEC tournament history. Just being able to, to get that lead and um, and to be able to kind of set the tone for the game, um, I, it started putting, it put, you put pressure on a lot of offensive teams, especially teams that live and die by the long ball. Now they go up and start taking bigger swings that they normally don't. In the previous game earlier in the year, we didn't really, the first game, we didn't really jump on them. And the, the game we did win, we jumped on them first and that's what and we held that lead and it really helped I think it helped Maddie in the circle against Georgia I think the thing that I was thinking about the most was just to get outs and to keep the ball in the ballpark um, I knew if we got a lead that we were gonna win use the momentum here we go and a nice play at short the backhanded grab by Lunderman nice that a girl good job Lundy I try to stop anything that's in my area basically like even if it's like anywhere close to me, I'm gonna try to get it. If I don't, then I'm like, well crap, like, I should have got that. We played incredible defense all year long, and I think that's what really kept us in games this year and helped us win games was our defense. Um, and I don't even mean pitching, I mean our, our infield and our outfield and Courtney behind the plate. I think that our defense was rock solid this year and that they really kept us in some important games, um, especially against teams like Georgia and Tennessee. Hey, slow the game down. Know what we have to do right here, okay? Big hitters coming up, okay? All right, hey, here we go, come on. Well, I, I, what Maddie did against Georgia that day was able to spot her pitches on both sides of the plate. She was able to change speeds or change up even though she didn't throw it a lot. Coach Maud did a really good job with mixing pitches for her and not um, being so consistent. Yeah! And the strikeout for Osias, and they're one out away from the win. Fourth K for Maddie. Dickey, fly ball out to right, and that'll do it. For the first time in school history, Ole Miss has won an SEC tournament game. Yes! Yeah! First one, baby! <laughs> Maddie pitched an amazing game, and I felt it. I felt it from the beginning. Amazing. Like, that was the best we've ever played. How about the Rebels? <laughs> Florida's a really, really good team. So we were like, you know, we have to do everything right, basically. We have to, have to try to be perfect in postseason. It's not about um, the butter team. Like, there's an, always an underdog, and it's just about doing the little things right. We're coming off a great win against Georgia, going into Florida. We knew that we wanted to make it a competitive ball game. And again, Maddie had another um, amazing start. Through the first three innings of the contest, Ole Miss would hold the then number one team in the nation scoreless. However, Mother Nature would soon intervene. Fans, please be aware that radar has detected lightning just eight miles away. And there you go. You may have just picked up on the public address announcer. They have seen lightning within eight miles of the facility, so they will take the players off the field. Mother Nature decided to swoop in. It's going to be like 30 minutes, so we're going to get back at it. Who are doing it shouldn't be doing it. Probably getting a little bit delusional and 
Courtney, the one that has the least rhythm on the team, is representing women's softball, and I don't know if that's good or not. Our team danced a lot. I didn't. I just watched and laughed, but... <laughs> During the rain delay, we all just started dancing, and we were just being our typical selves, just stupid, just dancing around, and I think that kind of um, made us more relaxed. We didn't just come back and we're like, oh, we had a rain delay, like, let's just get in, get out. We wanted to come back, and we still wanted to win at that point, and that's really difficult after having a three-hour delay before playing the game again. Despite picking up right where they left off, the deadlock between the Rebels and Gators would finally break in the top of the fifth. Terrific job with the Super Bowl. You could really pick up the wiggle of that. The ball squirts away from the catcher. Osias coming home to cover, and Stewart slides in safe. Beating the throw by Surrett. Ole Miss would not allow a run for the rest of the game, but Florida would end the night a 1-0 winner. Been a terrific season for the Rebels. Preseason pick to finish 12th in the SEC. They finished 9th and were good enough to make it into the quarterfinals and the deepest conference in the country. It's about the details. If you want to take the next step, okay, and we're, our next step is regionals, we're talking next step. Our next step is to win that stinking thing. We have to pay attention to details. We have to do the little things to win ball games. You have to play every pitch. Every pitch. You can't take off. If you take off, teams will beat you. Okay, and we have to take that going into the regional. Rebs on three. One, two, three. Rebs! Wings! What's up, um? We about to eat. What we've been doing all season, <laughs> boy. One, first just to be in there. So proud of uh, all the girls and the, the, the coaching staff and our auxiliary staff that have worked so hard to be able to get us this opportunity. What a great night for us. And everything that they've worked for uh, has been rewarded tonight to play in an NCAA regional on the trip to Oklahoma City. I just want to say thank you to everybody that came. Um, wow. Never in a million years I think this happened. So we appreciate it. Thank you for all your support this year. I know the girls appreciate it. Uh, we just want to make Rebel Nation proud. From day one when our staff came in, it's about making Ole Miss relevant in the softball world. And we feel like we've done that now. We feel like we've arrived. And this is kind of our, our song now as we're heading into postseason. very uh, lucky and um, we're very fortunate to be able to be here in Norman uh, to be able to participate in our first NCAA regional um, you know we've already had a, a gracious host in Oklahoma University has done an outstanding job great field uh, we're looking forward to being part of this historic event for the University of Mississippi I just think it's it's really rewarding to be able to finally be here I know that we've talked about it all year and that's really been our goal is to get to regionals get to regionals I don't think it stops there and I don't think that um, we're gonna settle with just being here we want to come in here and we want to win it, win ball games coming in as a freshman and be able to play shortstop for you know these players that were here before you know I'm really excited about all this and especially for the seniors that you know from the program before they just Wanted to get here really, really well, and you know, we just did. Well, we are at the uh, ASA Hall of Fame, and we're about to go and do the college section, and hopefully, Coach T is going to be in here. I have that helmet in my garage. Is it? <laughs> hey, look, you're so famous. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually gonna get this for a little girl. She's one of our number one fans. I'm gonna take it back to her because she'll never be able to come. Here, so, you know, I'm gonna get all the girls to sign it so she can put it in her room. She has like an Ole Miss jersey hung up in her room, so I'm gonna get it for her. So we're here at 
the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum and we're here today to just kind of learn more about the Oklahoma City bombing and to kind of respect those that lost their lives that day. It for sure tells us that there's a lot more that we play for and there's a lot more than just playing the game that we get to play every day and we should be blessed to do what we do every day and uh, you know we play for something higher than us and there's always others that are struggling and there's always more going on in the world than what we're doing and we should continue to be blessed in every opportunity that we get. It's important for the girls to kind of take a step back and to not always be so focused right on the moment of what we're here to do as far as softball, but to realize all the other things that are going on and things that we can do to step back and to realize those other things going on in the world and to be together in other forms of just softball, to be here and to kind of figure other things out and to take a step back and see the world a different way. I just wanted to play, to be honest. I was ready, I mean, we done. We made it our goal to go to regionals and we were finally there. Before the Tulsa game, the anticipation was really killing me. I was dying to get out there and just play the game already. We had been um, scouting Tulsa all week and just thinking about everyone in the tournament that we'd, we'd want to play. The excitement of being at a regional for the first time, um, the excitement of being with the team past the last day of the season or the last SEC game. Our entire team was very, very hungry. Um, and we felt like we had a pretty good opportunity to make some waves in our, in our regional. In the first two innings, neither Ole Miss nor Tulsa would be able to add to the scoreboard. In the third, all that would change. This Tulsa team, we talked about the fact that in the American Athletic Conference tournament, not only did they not allow a run, they did not allow a runner past second base. Lampton. That hand will drop in, and the Rebels are running home. Cully comes in safely, and Ole Miss is on the board. A little two-out rally. Will it keep going for the Rebels? That ball is out of here! Sarah Van Schaik with a three-run home run, her second home run of the season. The Ole Miss Rebels score their first ever runs in the NCAA tournament. As soon as I saw her swing, I was like, this thing's going yard. And so it went, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I just, it didn't even like go over the fence yet. And I was already out of the dugout, ready to go give her a high five and just do our little like eating thing. I was so pumped. And I think that really just like set the momentum and set the tone. Everything we had was like a hashtag first, basically. So if you got a walk, first walk in the regional, get a base hit, first base hit in the regional, first home run in the regional. And it was just it was just fun. It was a fun game. Once Sarah hit that ball and it went out, I think it was kind of that deep breath, that aha moment that guys, we got this. We're we're in this ball game. We have an opportunity to win this thing, get our first win in advance. After that point we really had all of the momentum and all of the energy on our side. With a newfound energy from the Homer, the Rebels locked in as they had all year long on defense. Sheffield reached out and got that, and Dakota Matico reached out and took it away. I honestly had no doubt in my mind that if Maddie was in the circle, she would give 110% in every every single pitch. Um, I felt I kind of felt like bad because she had to ride out her arm injury for so long, but she was willing to do whatever it took in order to win. And I knew that um, she's a fighter and she was she's competitive, and that's how Maddie's always been. And I, that's what I love about her. This game is about the little things, especially when you get closer and closer to postseason. And in postseason, it's not about um, the butter team. Like there's an, always an underdog, and it's just about doing the little things right. Edmiston rips one into the glove of Lunderman, and that will end the game. The Ole Miss Rebels picking up their first NCAA tournament win in school history. Woo! Good job, good job. I want to be the first one to congratulate you guys on the first win in postseason history. Bomb by, uh, as they say, Ben Schmack. Ben Schmack! Okay, and Maddie, Maddie, another great job. Congratulations, ladies.
Riding the momentum from the first victory in school history at an NCAA regional, a matchup with the number three Oklahoma Sooners awaited the spirited Rebels. Probably next to Florida, um, probably the team that's most fundamentally sound in every aspect of the game. I mean, they were the number one defense going in. Um, they were one of the best offenses going in. They were the hottest NCAA team going into the tournament. So we knew we had a task at hand. Oklahoma quickly jumped out to an 8-0 lead in a massive second inning, putting the Rebels in a hole that they would not be able to climb out of, losing 9-1 in five innings. Well, what I told our girls, I think it was in the third or fourth inning, I brought them together, and I think we had just given up that big five or six run inning, and I told the girls, I said, we're either gonna do one of two things. We're either gonna lay down and die, and that's gonna be it for us, or we're gonna fight, we're gonna fight through this adversity, we're gonna be tough, we're gonna compete on a daily basis and go back to kind of what our mantra was, our Taleo mantra, to be tough, to have energy, enthusiasm, no matter what we're doing. Our girls did that even though we didn't um, win the ball game, the game was shortened by a mercy game, we put up that one run, we put a lot of pressure on that, but it gave us that vote of confidence that we were still in this um, to go into that next game against um, the winner of that next game, which was Wichita State. It's the final game of the day in the Norman, Oklahoma Regional. One of these two teams will keep their postseason hopes alive. One going home. What a tournament it has been for these two teams. Ole Miss, which had never been here before. Just big moments in the history of these programs. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see who can get that second postseason win tonight. I think Coach Smith said it best. When it comes to softball, you really just got to flush it. You got to turn the page. It, every day, every game's a new game, and the, the game doesn't remember. We didn't talk about anything from the first game. It was over. It was done with. The game doesn't remember our nine to one loss to Oklahoma. It doesn't. It didn't remember, you know, how bad of the bats we we took. But we knew that we were going to go in and compete. We actually had a. a little saying going like bounce like every like little few seconds like you just I mean you just gotta bounce back basically. This game I want our word to be bounce because we need to bounce back and anything that happens to us today like if something happens you bounce back from it. Who's in charge? We are. Behind ace Matty Osias in her second appearance of the day the Rebels found themselves in a defensive battle with the Shockers until the fifth inning. All season long, we had been really consistent in scoring in the fifth inning. So for me, as a pitcher going into a game, I, I know that I have to keep my team close at least the first five innings of the game to be able to win the ball game. So for me, I was just thinking, you know, keep the ball in the park, um, keep the ball low, let my defense work. And I knew it was only a matter of time before our, before our offense would score. The whole season, like, we always scored in the fifth inning, or that's when our bats started to, like, come in or something just happened. Like, it could have been, like, luck or anything, but that's when everything just started happening. So, like, the fifth inning came, and we were like, we're winning the fifth. this game, the Red and Blue would continue their knack for fifth inning production. The rally started with back-to-back -back hit batsmen and a sacrifice bunt to push the runners over, leaving the door open for runs to be scored. Big moment in the game here. Ole Miss can extend their lead or Wichita State can hold them tight, keep the score within reach. Lampton finds a hole! The Rebels have one and they will hold up after that. Strother right in front of home plate. Unlucky break for Wichita State as now the Rebels have added on three more runs, opened up a four nothing lead. The four runs were all that the Rebels needed to seal their victory, earning the right to play another day. The Ole Miss Rebels historic season will continue as they advance to the first regional final in school history. Today in Norman, Oklahoma, a sold out crowd will either see a Sooner streak survive or an Ole Miss team add one more jewel to its sparkling season of first. We didn't talk about anything from the first game. I mean, there was no conversation about it. It was over, it was done with. We flushed it, we got rid of it. Yeah, we tried to forget about the game before. It was like, there's no reason even trying to bother because it's over with, like you can't do anything about it now. Matty Osias would take the mound again for the Rebels 
and the senior would find herself in a pitcher's duel early with Oklahoma's Paige Parker. For Sunday, I was just thinking, you know, pitch my game and it doesn't matter who we're playing. Kind of the same mindset that I had going into Florida, which was just, you know, throw the ball, um, throw the ball and keep the ball in the zone. So now it's Ole Miss's turn at the plate and they're going to have to figure out a pitcher in Paige Parker for Oklahoma, who has wins in her last 20 straight appearances. Paige Parker is an unbelievable pitcher, um, you know. They're a program that year in and year out, they're in a super regional or they're in, in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma is a very good situational hitting team. You have their, um, their coach at third base telling them, where, telling them where she wants them to hit it. Miller lines it into right field. The Sooners are headed for home and on the board. Oklahoma would add two insurance runs in the top of the seventh. The Rebels would have one last chance in the bottom of the seventh to save their historic season of first. Their first NCAA tournament appearance. They're facing off here against the number three national seed Oklahoma Sooners in Norman. No easy task and the Rebels have hung right in there in this game, but right now, Paige Parker and the Sooners in control. It was 0-0 going into the fifth and then even 1-0 going into the, into the seventh inning. So I think that the final score doesn't really reflect how great of a game our defense played. Surrett pops it up. That's a ball game. The Oklahoma Sooners shut out the Ole Miss Rebels 3 to nothing, and will be headed to their seventh straight Super Regional right here on their home field in Norman. Outside of Ole Miss, ever expected us to play in a regional final? Nobody. Ladies, seriously, what a run we've had. Okay? You have turned people that had no idea about Ole Miss softball into lifelong fans. It's hard to say bye to the seniors, but we want 41 games. What sucks is that you guys made it hard for us to win more than 41 next year. I love you guys to death. This is the worst time to say bye to me. All you girls believe in it. You girls that didn't play, you guys stuck with it and stayed positive. I'm proud of you for that. I love you guys. One, two, three. Rips! I think that we have proven, we were proven that we were one of the top 64 teams in the country. Um, we made it to Championship Sunday, which means that we were one of the you know, top 32 teams in the country playing on Championship Sunday. Um, so I feel like we're that, and now we're just gonna progress on it. Yes, we are young. We're the third youngest team in, in the NCAA, and I think that is exciting about the future of our program and what we have, starting four or five freshmen at one time. We've got a good class coming in. I think that they'll know we're relevant now. Like, they'll want to come watch us. It just makes me excited because our team is so young and we have so much talent. And as the years go on, they're just going to get better and they're going to get stronger and they're going to be ready to ready to play because they've played these teams before and they know that, that we can win and they know the potential we have and how far we've come. We've worked so incredibly hard in my four years to get this softball program to where it is now. And our senior class is just so happy to leave this program in better condition than when we got here. Proud to be the coach of this program. Proud of the girls, proud of the history and the legacy that we've created. No matter what's thrown at us, we're gonna, we're gonna be tough and we're gonna come and fight each and every day. And that's, that's kind of what is the mark of our program.